Strugglers, if you don't think I watched every gosh darn Mary-Kate and Ashley movie as a kid, you're out of your mind. Oh, I'm sorry, you also think I didn't watch their 90s sitcom Two of a Kind? Who do you think you're dealing with? One of the straight-to-VHS movies that my sister made us watch 5,000 times growing up was called You're Invited to Mary-Kate and Ashley's Mall Party. And this bad boy had me hyped. <laughs> In hindsight, it was definitely just a 20 minute long advertisement for the Mall of America in Minnesota. I have a feeling we'll be shopping for everything. Now you're talking, but don't spend it all in one place. Meet you in the Rainforest Cafe in one half hour. But I'm a sucker for advertisements, okay? We have a bunch of family that lives in the Minneapolis area, so we took that long drive a lot when I was a kid, and this is... Wow, this is taking me back. Underwater world, let's go. I touched a shark there once and I wasn't even scared. Lego imagination, I remember racing Lego cars down like a ramp there. Sick. Dude, Camp Snoopy amusement park, stop playing. There was this iconic log shoot ride there that I probably have been on 9,000 times. It had these big scary Paul Bunyan and Babe the Blue Ox animatronics inside. I still have nightmares, I gotta be real with you. But literally none of that stuff holds a candle to the ultimate attraction, Cereal Adventure. Vacations of a Lifetime, new family attraction celebrates cereal, as it should. Didn't think you'd ever read that headline, did you? <laughs> <laughs> this bad boy was a 16,000 square foot family attraction created to celebrate cereal. You hear that? Created to celebrate cereal. This is the world I want to live in. We're really doing it right out here, man. They describe it as a place where your favorite cereals come to life. Come to life. <laughs> Lucky Charms were just a figment of your imagination before Serial Adventure opened. Oh gosh, look at this poor little girl. She's terrified. <laughs> what horrors has she seen in the Cheerios tub? So what is there to say about Serial Adventure that hasn't already been said? A lot, apparently. Because I scoured the internet for information about this place, and wow, was I having a hard time finding anything. What's that all about? My favorite theme park attraction, and you guys are just gonna act like it did never happen. How dare you? Somebody called Defunct Land. Okay, cause this is a sin. IMDB says that Anthony Bourdain filmed a part of his show here once. As a child, I longed for the wonderful Sugar Jack rush of brightly colored cereals. Thanks to Mall of America, a childhood dream is finally realized. The sugar content in this one tooth decaying treat more than makes up for a decade of fruity cereal goodness I was deprived of as a youth. I gotta call my dentist. <laughs> That wasn't very kind. Some may feel crass commercialism has sunk to soggy new depths in the cereal milk, but that didn't stop General Mills from opening Cereal Adventure, where your favorite cereals come to life this summer inside the Mall of America in Bloomington, Minnesota. Excuse you? Crass commercialism? This place was created to celebrate cereal. You Scrooge. You know, I'm really not appreciating the pessimism surrounding Cereal Adventure so far. I think we need to change the tone a little bit, move in a more positive direction. Before I snap, you're harming my childish nostalgia. What are you doing right now? Why are you doing this to me? Larger than life characters include a 50 foot tall Sonny the Cuckoo Bird, a 36 foot Trix Rabbit, and a 24 foot Lucky the Leprechaun. There's also a 24 foot high Wheaties box, quote, so big it could hold 17,280 regular sized Wheaties packages. Good God, that is big. <laughs> That's such a funny sentence to me also. So big it could hold 17,280 regular sized Wheaties packages. Can't believe they just come out and talk about your mom like that. <laughs> yes, sir! Thank you so much! Like, comment, and subscribe! Notification bell! He's back on top! I don't know what it is about things being oversized like that, but I get a kick out of it. Big cow, big old buffalo, big pheasant. They always bring me great joy. Check this out, I got over my fear of Paul Bunyan to take this picture. Look at how happy I am. Look at that smile. And look at those eyes. Ooh. Paul has seen some sh**. Huh. I just remember being at Camp Snoopy Amusement Park once as a kid, standing in line for the Pepsi Ripsaw roller coaster, and looking up into the sky and seeing that great big sign just peeking over the horizon, calling my name. I simply had to experience it. And I think I've kept you waiting long enough. 
it's time for you to experience it as well. The only footage that I could find of this place, other than Anthony Bourdain being a hater, was from this Minnesota PBS News segment. They've got a huge setup at the Mall of America. We took a tour. This is Serial Adventure, and it's brand new. We just opened it this week at the Mall of America. Basically, it's where your favorite cereals come to life. Man, they're really sticking to the script on that one, huh? Hey, quick question, guys. Is this the place where my favorite cereals come to life? Because... Because if not, I think I'm just going to go. You're greeted by gigantic Trix Rabbit and Lucky the Leprechaun as you enter in. The whole purpose is really to celebrate cereal. You can learn how cereal is made and also really interact with the characters and brands that you love. Nowadays, if you want to interact with the brands you love, you got to go on Twitter. Ugh. Catch me at the Mall of America yucking it up with General Mills. Okay, Wendy's eat your heart out. We start Cereal Adventure at Farm to Factory. And this is where you really learn about the cereal making process. They learn about grains and really the whole process of how cereal is made. You walk through kind of the uh, field of wheat here and there's all kinds of fun facts for visitors to read along the way. For instance, there are over 12,000 kernels of wheat in a box of Wheaties. Okay, a lot of this is kind of boring, believe it or not. <laughs> it can't be. Can't be true, not serial adventure. Boring, what? There are some little knobs and like, I don't know, buckets that you can turn, I guess. And a room where grain falls on the roof, which is neat. The kids love it oh, to feel like they're just surrounded by the grain. I'd say that's an easy top five things that all kids tend to love. Whenever people are talking about things that entertain kids, being surrounded by the grain is always up there. Is that safe? Are they allowed to let kids go down a slide that's that big? Going that fast? That's gotta be some kind of hazard, right? We go from the silo into this fun, colorful, interactive area. This offers a video showing vintage footage and also shots inside actual factories to really give kids an idea of- I'm sorry, ma'am. These kids are not paying attention to literally anything that's going on on those TVs. <laughs> Dude saw a wheel and his brain told him to spin it. All right, nothing more, nothing less. Pushing buttons and flipping switches like their lives depend on it. This is where kids kick off their serial adventure. And now that they really understand what the process is, then they can enter the giant cooker. Voluntarily, I hope. I've seen these things at like local carnivals and haunted houses and hold, hold on a second. Yeah, whoa, okay. If you get dizzy easily, cover your eyes for a second. Look at this thing. God dang, those are gnarly. It kind of puts the one at Cereal Adventure to shame, if I'm being honest. That cereal cooker ain't got nothing on this. Kids can walk through on a soft floor that feels like it's, they're walking on the dough. This is where you heat up the cooker. Kids turn this wheel and really feel part of the process. They see it light up and the heat moves all the way to the cooker and makes the dough heat up. I don't mean to throw shade or anything, but these look like some vacation Bible school decorations. <laughs> How much did they say this place cost to build? Millions of dollars. Where does it go? Where do, wh who? We're gonna do some cereal for Lou and hopefully he'll like it. I wonder what kind he'd like. Let's do, give him some kicks, um, some Lucky Charms, and Golden Graham. Sounds like a good combo. Speak for yourself, Liv. It's taken on a conveyor belt through Serial Adventure and all the way down to the second floor to our store where they're gonna fill it with the cereal that we asked to be put in there, that very combination. And 20 minutes later, we'll be able to pick it up. Holy smoke, 20 minutes later? They're just mixing a few existing cereals into the same box. What are they down on the second level shooting each individual piece into the box from across the room? That was an old Jim Gaffigan joke about pharmacists, I think. Why does it take five hours to put six pills in an orange cup? What are they trying to hit it from like 10 feet away? I got my cereal, I got my cereal. This is uh, just like the real thing. Thanks to Richard Bowring for shooting that story. I was not there, but this is just like the real thing. Like the real thing, like the real thing, Ken. Like uh -huh. the real thing. God, Lou's broken again, guys. It's not even full. It's half empty. <laughs> Let me guess, content settled during shipping? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> Lou is not about to suck up to General Mills. He's a man of integrity. I respect that. I gotta admit, 
This was a hard sell for my grandma when she brought us to the Mall of America. She would take us to Camp Snoopy and then we would all get the unlimited ride wristbands, which were not cheap. So she was already being extremely generous towards us. And then of course I was like, grandma, we gotta pay extra money to go to the cereal land. Cause I see a big statue up there, grandma. I gotta see what the big statue's all about, grandma. Children will view it as a fun experience, said John, who specializes in children's marketing. Of course, they don't pay the admission. Ain't that the truth? There's a segment of people who will feel this is not what they want to spend their time with, another group who will simply find it too expensive, and another who will say, why not? You know, initially my grandma was in the group of, we're not, no, come on. <laughs> but we turned on the charm, we gave her a little dimply smile, and we convinced her to take us to Serial Adventure. And it's funny how memories work, because when I was watching that PBS segment, I didn't, <laughs> none of that was familiar to me. I kind of vaguely remember the cooker thing, but I didn't, th that was never something that I thought back about. It was just when I saw it, it kind of triggered something in my brain. There are only two things about that park that I actually remember. And the first one was this Cocoa Puffs kind of ride thing. It was a VR video game type of thing. You would sit inside the Cocoa Puff and there was a screen and I think it was on a track and it would move and you were like playing some kind of video game or whatever. And I don't know, I think I remember that costing extra money as well. So I'm very sorry for that, Grandma. And then the other thing that I remember was this Cheerios kind of play area and everything was all padded and soft. <laughs> because we were reckless. And then the Cheerios were massive and oversized and it was just kind of like this netted off area with this big ramp and you could roll the Cheerios up and then down. And um, I don't know, I remember, that was like such a cool memory to me. Although describing it out loud, it sounds pretty lame. So after watching that news segment and them not referencing either of those two things, I thought maybe I was misremembering it because my brain is essentially nothing more than a blended up kid cuisine poured into my skull. But then I finally found this article that listed all of the attractions within Serial Adventure. And wouldn't you know it, look at this. Among the entertaining and educational areas within Serial Adventure, Cheerios Play Park. Young children can slide down a giant spoon into a Cheerios filled cereal bowl or climb up the Honey Nut Hive and wave to their parents below. I would climb up the Honey Nut Hive, and I did wave to my parents. My, I, I waved to my grandma, my parents weren't there. Cocoa Puffs Chocolate Canyon includes enormous Cocoa Puffs. You know how I feel about things being oversized. Kids can sit and play a video game featuring Sonny the Cuckoo Bird on three different chocolate adventures. The seats move along with the game, ensuring a totally virtual experience. That's what I remember. Kid cuisine coming in handy today. I am riding high right now, okay? The nostalgia is almost too much to handle. For the longest time, I kind of thought maybe I was merging memories and this park didn't actually exist. I had asked friends about it. Nobody knew what I was talking about. I tried to find photos of us at this place. Clearly my grandmother thought we don't need to remember this. It's not, this is not gonna matter in their lives. Let's not bust out the, the Nikon for this one. But gosh darn it, I feel great now, knowing that it was real, seeing some video of it, and I think it's time that I go back. After all these years, it's been over 20 years since I was a serial adventure, and I need to see it again with my own eyes. Let's frickin' go, come on. Hold on, it was right here. It was right here at the top of some escalators. What is this? It's mini golf? What? What's Dora doing here? Wait a second, this feels wrong. Where's Snoopy? Who the hell is this? They changed everything. I hardly recognize this place. It's been taken over by Nickelodeon and crass commercialism. Maybe I looked in the wrong spot. It can't be gone. Serial Adventure can't be gone. I drove all the way here. I deserve so much more than this. This is so frickin' embarrassing. Everyone here is laughing at me, I can just tell. I can feel it. And why am I wearing this stupid shirt anyway? Captain Crunch isn't even General Mills, he's a dang Quaker Oats character for goodness sake. I'll never get to ride the big Cocoa Puffs. I'll never get to climb the Honey Hive or interact with my favorite brands. Oh, and being surrounded by the grain? Yeah, forget about it. That's not happening. It took me over four hours to get here. And for what? I can't just go home, that'd be a waste of an entire day. Hang on, Mary-Kate and Ashley spent a ton of time at the Mall of America. They found so many fun things to do, I could follow their lead. Oh boy, this is gonna be the best day ever!
Well, that was fun. I'm a little upset that I didn't look into it a little bit more and see that Serial Adventure closed after just under three years of being in operation. I feel like that's something that should have come up in one of those articles I was reading. That's okay. Just spent eight hours in the car for basically no reason, whatever. And you know, if you're super jealous of hearing about my awesome stories as a child, then you think, oh, maybe there's a Serial Adventure near me that I can go to. There's not. This is the first and only, said Lane. There will not be more of them. It's one of a kind. It sure was one of a kind, um, but I understand why they didn't expand. And this is something that one of the General Mills higher ups had said about why they did it in the first place. We felt like we were out of touch with the consumer. This is our way to connect one on one. So they built a serial themed amusement park in the Mall of America to connect with consumers. <laughs> hey. It's more fun than a TV commercial, I'll tell you that. I actually kind of hope that Defunct Land does cover this in some capacity at some point because they're really good at finding old footage and photos. And I just really, really had a hard time finding any of that. If anybody that's watching this video has been to Serial Adventure and you have photos of it, I would love to see them. I need visual proof that the Cocoa Puffs thing happened. All right, the Cheerios play area, I wanna see pictures. But other than that, that is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I wanna shout out somebody that did something very cool. I'll link the video in the description, but this person made a medley of a bunch of my songs that I've made over the years, and they played it on the ocarina. And I just appreciate this so much. It's so kind, it's so fun to see like something that I've done kind of be repurposed in a way by somebody else. Because, you know, as a creator, I get into the mindset that like, what I do is just post it and then it disappears into the world. But to see that real people are seeing it and connecting with it and enjoying it is so fun. So thank you so much for making this. And an extra thank you to my patrons. Those listed here are in the top tier. You guys are awesome. Let's all hop in a bus and we'll drive to the nearest serial themed amusement park the second that it opens. If you want to pick up some merch, strugglershop.com. Thank you once again for watching and liking and commenting and subscribing, all that good stuff. I will talk to you again very soon. Goodbye.